Star Wars Clone Wars returned this week episode of their final season, and that episode was called Shattered. I'm Cape Joel, and this is the video series where I give my thoughts and feelings on the episode that was, as well as shouting out any bigger references or themes I can find. As we join the episode, Bo-Katan and her forces are cleaning up the rest of Maul's loyalists. Of course, people like Gar Saxon aren't going to be in chains for long, but they don't know that yet. Ahsoka and Bo may have started as foes, but it's clear they forged a real respect for one another. Bo even confides in Ahsoka that she's not sure what kind of leader she's going to be. Duchess Satine had wanted Mandalore to be a planet of pacifists, and by and large, that lofty goal didn't work, did it? Worse still, things are only gonna go further downhill for the poor Mandalorians. Talk about imperial occupation, followed by a long period of living as nomads. Now, in the last episode, Ahsoka had learned about Darth Sidious and the plans to turn Anakin to the dark side. She could just tell the Council, but in the end, she opts not to, and honestly, I can see why. The Council stripped her of everything she ever knew when she was framed, and now she doesn't want to get her friend Anakin in trouble with them either. After all, as far as Ahsoka knows, Maul might just be making stuff up, which is why she only wants to talk to Anakin about this. Still, though, you gotta imagine, had she actually told the Jedi Council here, how different could things actually have ended up being. This scene is really great too because we actually get to see this very same council meeting in Revenge of the Sith, but now we get to see it from Ahsoka's angle and even Yoda sticks around a little bit after it's done. Very cool staging. Now Rex and Ahsoka get tasked with bringing Maul back to face Republic justice. In order to ship such a deadly force user though, the Mandos have offered up one of their old cages, a leftover relic from the wars between the Jedi and the Mandos. Heck, if you look close enough, you see a figure on the box that looks very much like Pre Vizsla with the Darksaber. It's on their way back, Ahsoka and Rex, two lifelong war buddies, begin to wonder what their existence is going to be now that the Clone Wars might actually be coming to a real end. It shows a fair amount of growth on Rex's part, who, when we first met him, was pretty rigid, just another clone in a sea of thousands, but now he's become a real thinking, feeling person with his own hopes and dreams. A personality that may very well never have been forged were it not for Rex's close working relationship with both Anakin and Ahsoka, which of course is what makes the next bit here so truly horrifying. You see, Rex goes to take an important communication while Ahsoka and Darth Maul end up feeling a massive disturbance in the Force. Yeah, that's right. They actually feel Anakin killing Mace Windu and completing his turn to the dark side. I like that it was because of their connection to their old masters. These two Padawans are able to, you know, kind of be there for this big important moment that they would have no other way of being there for. In a way, too, this is also a callback to old Ben Kenobi's line about screams being heard and then silenced. But as we all know, it's only gonna get worse from here as the Emperor being voiced for the first and only time in Clone Wars by his movie actor, Ian McDiarmid, invokes Order 66. The clone troopers, including Rex, turn on their Jedi allies. But, as we've seen time and time again, Rex has a stronger will than your average clone, and before he actually fires on Ahsoka, he's sure to bring up the name Fives as the key to all of this should Ahsoka be able to unravel the mystery. Now hunted by her former clone friends, Ahsoka is forced to make a very risky gamble. She opts to let loose Darth Maul, not because she likes him, not because she wants to join forces with him, but because she's gonna need a distraction, and Lord knows he's good at that if nothing else. Once again, this makes their rematch in the Rebels era even more interesting now in hindsight. Also, this adds to the greater tragedy that is the life story of Darth Maul, always a puppet to be used either by Sidious, the Night Sisters, and now officially Ahsoka too. If nothing else though, Maul does get himself a cool little hallway fight scene that is very reminiscent of the one Vader had during Rogue One. And speaking of Rogue One too, that one actually gets another very big shout out in this episode too, as Ahsoka tries to crack the mystery of the control chips. She actually manages to help Rex find and remove his by reciting the very same I am one with the Force, the Force is one with me speech from the movie. Of course, this does create a little bit of discontinuity from Rebels, wherein Rex said he cut his own chip out, where here we see he clearly had help. Also, in that same episode, Rex said he never turned on his Jedi, and yeah, I guess technically Ahsoka's a civilian now and not a Jedi, but still. We'll just file that right next to a thousand years versus a thousand generations and Leia saying she remembers her mom in Star Wars stuff that just doesn't make sense. 
As the episode comes to a close, Rex might be back on the good guys team, but they're still trapped on a ship surrounded by killer clones in a galaxy that is slowly but surely being eaten up by the new galactic empire. And so that was Shattered, and probably more than any other Clone Wars episode this season, this was the episode I really wanted to see. Where were Ahsoka and Rex during the events of Order 66? How did they manage to survive and escape, and more importantly than that, how did these events affect their characters? Well, it's right there in the title, isn't it? They were Shattered by all of this. If I had to pick out a single theme from this episode, it would be tragedy. We know so many bad things are coming as fans of the series, but we know we can't stop it. We can only just sit on in and watch. And even though we know from watching Rebels and Rogue One and everything else that Ahsoka and Rex ultimately survive and thrive in the future, still, we like them so much as people and as characters, our heart breaks along with them. In fact, I would say more than just about anything else, this is a really solid blueprint on how to do a proper prequel story. The events are secondary to what the actual characters themselves are feeling. And the best part is, there's still one more episode to tie all of this together. We know Rex and Ahsoka didn't stay together. What if any anything ended up breaking them apart. Did Ahsoka vow then and then to become the fulcrum of the Resistance, or did that take time itself? I don't know, and we're gonna have to watch the next episode to find out, won't we?